What's happening, guys, and welcome to our Impact Review. I'm Keith, and I am joined by my co-host, Ro. What's going on, man? Not much. How you doing today, man? I am exhausted. I worked 14 hours yesterday, eight hours at my normal job, and then I came home and put in six hours on the business, finished up about 11, 11.30 last night, so uh, I'm a little tired. Man, 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 man. I mean, I know the weekend's here, Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not as tired, but I think I will be between now and trying to set everything up for tomorrow's well, game. You're entertaining, right? Yeah, you know, it's funny. My team is in, in the Super Bowl, and instead of me sitting back and enjoy, enjoying, I'm going to be hosting. It's yeah. funny how that works. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. So, how did you watch Impact last night? Oh, it's, uh, for me, I know Impact on Twitch is a uh, big hashtag. It's Impact on YouTube for me. Um, unfortunately, it starts before I actually get home. So, and I mean, where I'm at at times, my connection is poor since I'm not using Wi-Fi since I'm out. So I can't catch it right then. And then by the time I get home, it's already started. And I have a choice where I could either watch whatever they have or, you know, wait to watch it the next day. Well, you know, we know watching the next day doesn't work. So yeah, I do go by the YouTube highlights. Yeah. You know, I, I would give you a hard time, but as I said, I didn't finish up till about 1130 last night. So I didn't watch it on Twitch either. I went online this morning and, uh, found myself some, uh, some stream and, uh, watched it that way. Well, see, you have that three hours ahead of me, so... Yeah, I do have a little advantage there. Yeah. Uh, so, from what you saw, what was your overall thoughts of the show? You know what? I just find myself in... Maybe you can argue watching the highlights does myself a disservice as when I'm kind of critiquing the product. But I find a couple of things I like, but then everything else just seems so standard to me. There's nothing mm -hmm. that really jumps out where it's like, whoa... I mean, I guess the biggest takeaway is uh, we know our next pay-per-view, Rebellion, is in yeah. April. Yes, yeah, coming from the Rebel Complex. So the name makes sense. Uh, so we opened the show with the six-man tag. I think it was mentioned two weeks ago or last week. Uh, the Lucha Brothers and Taurus versus LAX and Daga. Um, this match was perfectly set up by impact this checked all the boxes for them you can continue the lax and the lucha brothers you can play to the mexican audience and you can insert some triple a talent into the match I, I feel like that's all the things that impact tries to do when they're out in mexico but uh i overall i thought the show was was pretty good uh, like you said it was pretty standard nothing too too much stood out um an easy watch as usual but you know, overall good stuff. Um, so I, I enjoyed Taurus's ring gear. Uh, he had, like, I guess, like a bull mask on. Um, we got a lot of uh, Cerro Miedo chants from the crowd, obviously. Pentagon is the fan favorite there. But, I mean, overall, this was pretty standard. Your typical high-flying match between the six men. I don't know about you, but since they put Pentagon and Phoenix into the tag team, it just seems like everything is repetitive and you're just going through the motions in the match like when they're single stars they can do a lot more but since they're in the tag team you kind of get one in the ring they do their own moves you get the other one in the ring they do this their own and then they get the tag team moves i don't know what do you what do you think about that no i i'm in total agreement with you i mean first off um i didn't get to see too much of daga and that's the one person i was uh interested in seeing just because you know he might be somebody that stays on board after these tapings and from what i seen from taurus you know he he pulled off some neat uh it looked like a spinning fisherman buster i thought was pretty cool mm -hmm. but yeah that's the thing with the lucha brothers man like i watched them they're one of the teams where it's, everybody gets their stuff in like it just seems so kind of choreographed and i know with wrestling it's obviously planned you know but with oh, their, <laughs> with their there, stuff, there was some bad spots in this match where like uh, not to cut you off, but that whole sequence where they hit the moves outside and you just like I think when Phoenix got up to the to the turnbuckle and you just saw all the guys literally get up, move to the center and then Phoenix hits his move. Yeah, you know, I yeah, I didn't I didn't <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know if I caught that part, but no, it, I mean, 
I'll, I say it like this just just for me. And look, everybody's going to watch the product with a different lens. And, you know, that's fine. I feel like if you've seen a Lucha Brothers match before, you've seen them all. And I know that's probably unfair, but there's not one that separates it from the other. And then we get what we get to set up for next week. And it's kind of like, you know, and it's been uh, promoted as, man, this was one of the best matches. Like, to me... I seen what they did at uh, Homecoming. I mean, that was nice it's in its own right. But I feel like one of their matches, one doesn't stick out from the other. I feel like it's all the same to me. Uh, that's that's a pretty fair criticism. Um, and I, I mean, I, I know they do go a little extra during the pay-per-view matches. I'm sure we'll see that next week when uh, we get the rematch between the two of them. But yeah, no, you're, you're, you're pretty on the nose with that one. And then my, my critique, too, was... You know, this comes to show you how much of a piss poor job they've done, Impact's done, building up other credible tag teams. Like, we're going to get the rematch from Homecoming with the Challengers getting a, a rematch mm-hmm. against LAX. And I, and I guess, you know, the reason is they've beaten everyone else. You know, they beat the Rascals, who I guess were supposed to be an upcoming team, and we'll get into them later. Um, <laughs> yep. But they're, they haven't built any other tag teams. And, you know, it's just it's funny how a lot of times people are talking about, hey, you know, we don't want to see the same matches. We don't want to see the rematch clause and et cetera. But, you know, it seems so circumstantial with certain individuals. So, like I said, I'm sure the match will be good. Um, a part of me feels this is just a way that maybe we'll see a title change. I mean, we'll have to <laughs> wait and see. But um, yeah, I'm I pretty mean- sure uh the, the titles are going to change next week. Well, like you said, they've kind of booked geared toward the Mexican crowd here, so I, that wouldn't be a shocker to me. Um, the Lucha Brothers and Torres end up picking up the victory after the Lucha Brothers hit a spike package pile driver on Ortiz. And then, like we stated, Pentagon grips the microphone after the match, and he challenges them to a rematch, which uh, I think Conan is the one who accepts for them. But, yeah, no, I mean... Make your champions lose right here. So, so protect the gotta, challengers. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, uh, and we're going to see that a little later on, too. <laughs> um, then we go backstage, uh, unless you want to cover some more on the match. No, those, those are just my, my takeaways, man. And look, it's nothing against them. Like, I think they would have been a great addition to the Impact roster. But I, and like you mentioned, you know, when they're separate, I feel like there's so much more that they can do. And I think back to when Phoenix faced uh, Johnny Impact, it was mm-hmm. a world title match. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, it was incredible. Even his match against uh, uh, Brian Cage for the X-Vision title was nice. And then obviously Pentagon's feud with Sammy Callahan, though, you know, that provided us some great matches. Yeah. But when they get together, it just, for me, you know, it's, it seems like it's just the same stuff. Right. Um, and, you know, not not to move away from that, but the the great matches thing, because, I mean, that's been kind of what they've been doing recently is we've getting a lot better quality matches, but it doesn't seem like those are pushing the needle at all. Nothing does at this point. It's sad, sadly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they're not changing it up again. They're not taking the chances like we hope they would. I mean, granted, we're a month into the year, but, you know, it's uh, it's tough to to say where they're going next. And it's crazy, man, because remember, we all thought, and I mean, I know we both had our opinions about how they finished up 2018, but it was like, okay, well, 2018 was a rebuild year. 2019, no excuses. And it just seems like the first month of uh, 2019, like, they've kind of taken a couple steps back, it seems. They've been forced to rebuild almost again. Yeah, yeah. I guess, in you know, and that's what they didn't need. Right. Yep. All right, so moving on, uh, Melissa Santos backstage interviews Moose and Cross. Cross is obviously pissed because Cage got involved last week. Uh, Cross says Cage is going to learn a valuable lesson in the immediate future. Moose tries to calm him down. He says they're going to kick their asses, let Cage and Impact implode, and then he says he's going to take Melissa out on a date. Uh, I got a kick out of that one, especially, you know, considering she is Brian Cage's wife. Um, but, I mean, that, that, that could lead to a storyline later on. I'm, you know, the the one sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 you're good. The one thing that they've done right, it seems with Killer Cross, it seems like, you know, his character, they've given him the great direction where he can go so many different routes. Like you think about 
he's had a feud really with Johnny since the final hour. I think I had mentioned this last mm-hmm. week. But now it's kind of like you're starting up something with Brian Cage. And then Moose, I think Moose is playing his role well. Um, and then another thing I think they got to fall back on and it, it's something that I wish, and I mean, I know with the whole Aries debacle, it kind of, um, you know, erased that idea. But I really thought a cross and Moose tag team, uh, you know, a tag team run to the tag titles would have been nice. And you could have done that while they had the Cage and Johnny thing, um, had they put the belts. I, I think the Lucha Brothers sets them up for a little more high caliber feuds like that. Um but yeah, no, I've noticed that it seems like a trend that we're constantly getting Moose and Cross interviews. Um, but I, I think that's because it's a strong point to them. And like you said, they're playing the characters well. Yeah, so, I mean, and I didn't catch this just but by going by what you're just saying. I just think that's excellent. I wish, and that's the unfortunate part when you're catching some of the highlights, you don't get to see every backstage segment. But mm-hmm. I think, you know, Cross, the one bright spot they have is with Cross and you know, I'm hoping that they don't drop the ball on it. Yeah. But um, so I've complained in the past about the pacing of the show. And it seems like a lot of times they kind of put a bunch of segments together. Like we had this backstage interview. And then we got LAX backstage next where Conan just basically te- tells them to keep it professional in their rematch. And then we got the GWN flashback, which was a tag title match from Slammiversary 17, which was good that that was more relevant. But then again, we saw a bunch of talents that is missed. Um, Garza Jr., um, El Hijo del Fantasma. And then we get the pay-per-view preview. But it just seems like this would be, it's a chunk of time that's taken up that, People kind of, you know, I don't know if they'd tune out because of it. Well, I mean, give them credit. I mean, they showcased one that was a little bit more relevant. But once again, it and you know what I kind of realized, too, it's probably hard for them to kind of pick matches from their library that doesn't involve talent that's no longer there. But put that put that stuff on explosion, like put it somewhere Mm. else. Like it, it I mean, unless they're seeing that this is making people want to subscribe and I guess, but I, you know, like many things, they seem so, they come across as so tone deaf when it comes to certain things. Well, yeah, yeah, no, you know, you're right. That that's probably what they should do here. Instead of the GWN flashback, they promote explosion. Say, you know, you'll get this unique match that takes place with whatever is going to be there. Then you're going to have around the ring. And then instead of that classic match, you could just do what you were going to do for the GWN flashback. Yeah, you know, exactly. I, I, and you're promoting your network with technically some new content, which makes sense. But I mean, I guess at this point, all they think about it as a library of past events, at least to my uh, understanding of things. Yep. And apparently they uploaded something recently. Um, I guess it was like a behind the scenes look at Bound for Glory and everything that took place. Apparently it was pretty good. I didn't didn't catch it yet. Yeah, I'll I guess have it, to look into that. Yeah, I think it talked a little more about the whole Aries situation as well. Yeah, well, with that, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you still got some people I've seen somewhere. They're like, well, what if he returns at the pay-per-view? <laughs> I mean, I, look, and I'm not, never going to be critical of somebody's opinion because, I mean, I know I have my own. But, I mean, you know, I feel sometimes some of this fan base is kind of, um, and I hate to use this, <laughs> because oh boy. There's, there's certain people that are actually suffer for this, so I apologize. But it's like an abusive mentality. Like so, sometimes, you know, some of the things that happened to this company are what people have done to this company, and you know, people are so forgiving. Like I'm pretty sure you can find an audience that would welcome El Patron back, and we know oh, all yeah. the stuff, all the stuff he's done. So sometimes you got to cut off ties and stuff, and. Hopefully it's, that's it's, not in the cards. It's always a fear in the back of my mind that either him or Aries is going to show back up and I'm just going to be like, well, can't say I'm surprised. Yeah. But uh, up next, we had uh, a rematch from Homecoming. Uh, Kiara and Jordan Grace versus Sue Young and Allie. Um, this was all Kiara and Jordan to start off the match. However, heels get the upper hand. They did a good job double teaming Jordan on the outside. I really liked the way... Um, uh, Sue and Allie were able to work together as a heel team. Good dynamic there. Uh, 
Kiara was constantly trying to get involved, but she kept getting restrained by the referee. Jordan ends up hitting her pounce. Her and Allie are, go, are down, both looking for the tag. Lights go out. Rosemary appears in Sue Young's spot. Jordan's able to make the tag while this is all happening. Uh, Kiara hits a spinning neck breaker into a bridge on Allie, and she gets the victory. Um, I guess the whole reason for this rematch was to insert Rosemary and do that little spot. Yeah, and I think that's and the 50, way And 50-50 booking. That's the way that I was taking it because, you know, originally and I was telling you, I said, how many variations of this these uh, participants do we need to see? Like, I get wanting to showcase uh, Jordan Grace and she's the uprising talent, but, mm-hmm. you know, Kira is in her own right as well. But, I mean, man, yo, I feel like every other week we've seen some form of Ali versus Kira, Sue Young versus Kira. Now they've uh, put Jordan Grace in the mix with Jordan Grace versus Ali or Jordan Grace. I don't know if we got Jordan Grace versus Sue Young yet. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, but, they, they still could be playing that Katarina storyline with Jordan. I mean, every time they go to a place, Katarina's taking new talent and having him face Jordan. And all you're doing is building up Jordan at this point with that. Um, because we, we didn't get an actual finish to that storyline, right? Uh, Katarina still said that she had something in store for Jordan. Is that is that correct? Yeah, but you know what? I think we've seen this time and time again. Sometimes they want to kind of just push that person to the moon. Like, I thought the way that they were portraying Jordan was fine. Like, I, I did think, I was like, all right, Katarina's going to keep uh, having people face Jordan. And then eventually, maybe they give uh, Katarina some cheap win or whatever like that. And then once that few blows off, they you know, put her in something else, but they put her in this and, you know, and I know some people like it and I'm not saying so much that I'm down on it, but this, I feel like it's been like a year that they've dragged this whole thing out. And I've always worried that if you're banking on dragging this out, because until Rosemary gets healthy, I don't know how long you're going to be able to do it. Yeah. Without losing the audience. Right. Yeah. And it's, that's why we keep getting the same sort of matches and stuff. And, you know, the one bright spot is it looks like we're going to get an Allie Rosemary thing. Mm. Um, not thing, but a, a, a Allie Rosemary feud, which that's nice in its own right. But what does it do for everyone else involved? You know, what about, what about poor Sue Young, man? I mean, oh, dropped, ever since she dropped that knockout championship, she's just been thrown by the wayside. It's just util, utilization of talent. And then, you know, people the are fact always. That she's co- even got a character, too. And they've never, and they've never, since she's been there, described why she's an undead bride. Like, it's just so many things, man. I think why, it, you know, I find myself, and even to you two at times, well, at least what you shared with me, be so critical, is the potential's there. And look, mm-hmm. we're not bookers. We're just kind of just sharing our opinion. But it's they waste so many different potential um, things to do with some of these people. And then it's like, if the people depart, it's oh well, you know, whatever, who cares? And you know, we got other people. Well, yeah, they true, didn't do but, anything, et cetera, yeah, but, et cetera. Yeah, but if you you know, yeah, we got other people, but if you're not doing anything with them, I mean you're no different than the E's problem. And the E has mm-hmm. a, abundance of talent and they have more shows. Like, I, I, I just don't get it, man. I really don't. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm completely agree with you there. Uh, then we had another Scarlet training video. No bananas this time. However, Bobo did get her wet. So, you know, there's that because she was near a pool. <laughs> <laughs> I did I did like I did like this though because I'm really interested to see the type of wrestler they portray Scarlet and I think it's going to help the knockouts division right now because what do we have? I mean, our next and I know our, I'm sure we'll get into it, but all right, after, all right, before before we get into this, who is her first opponent going to be? Is it going to be a roster member or someone they grab from Vegas? Uh, my guess, I'm going to say Alicia. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's the only viable option if they're going to utilize a roster member. As sad as that is, you know? I, I just don't get why they don't do go the local talent route. Like, you know, utilize some of the local talent and then have them kind of um, start a, a low tier feud. So whether it's, uh, you know, in Scarlett's case, whether it is a militia or I mean, I, I don't know if you want to say Katarina because Katarina is a heel, too. And I'm guessing Scarlett's a heel. But why not go mm-hmm. that route instead of automatically using roster members? But hey, but, uh, you know, on, I, on, on the 
um, higher note, I I do want to see what she she's gonna do in the ring. So I'm looking forward to that. No, yeah, she's definitely got a unique uh, move set, as we've seen highlighted on their uh, Twitter and YouTube. And I think she was on a couple of the one night onlys and Twitch specials. But yeah, no, I'm interested as well. I'm glad they moved this direction with her, as she is a competent in ring competitor. So I don't know if their hands were kind of tied at this point, and that's why they went this way. Probably so. I mean, it doesn't help the fact that she's a complete uh, competed on explosion, and then as well as there's uh, <laughs> clips of her competing elsewhere in average but uh, promos. Impact doesn't even make it seem like that show exists. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. It's the same thing with their one night only. They just kind of mm-hmm. just put them out there. Hey, uh, b- buy for uh, what nine ninety nine. I don't like. I said I don't even know if you can purchase them anymore. They're just GWN exclusives. Oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, all right, moving on. We had the much anticipated tag team match: Eddie Edwards and Eli Drake versus Dez and Wentz of the Rascals. Um, so you were correct. The Rascals did not win. <laughs> now, b- before I get into the Rascals aspect of it all, I did like. Oh, you know, the, this was the, good. Yeah, I liked the match, and I think the team of Eddie and Eli, there's something there, and I think should they continue as a team, they might be a tag team that could see challenging for the titles. I think yes. that's somebody they'll they'll get behind. Uh, um, my exact thoughts when I was watching this match, I was like, because this is a feud you could drag out because you could have Eli try, kind of trying to little by little turn Eddie Edwards back into his old self. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could go that route, have them ha- get the titles, and then have them turn on each other. Well, have uh, Eli turn on Eddie, mm. and then you can have them feud. I, you know, will we get that? Who knows? But I wouldn't be opposed to that. I mean, I know, you know, we've all been clamoring t- for them to put Eli in the main event, but I, I kind of believe he'll get there eventually. They right. just got to kind of have to open a door for him. So while we're standing uh, at that topic, it was interesting. Don said something during the match. He said, Eli is sometimes a little too concerned with his outside projects. He brought up Hollywood and a couple other things. So I'm wondering if that was a little, you know, jab at him and possibly why they haven't given him a push. Well, if it is, that's probably one of the dumbest reasons I could think because you would li- like to believe him him um if he's trying to get in Hollywood if he's champion I mean assuming that you know he's still you know honoring his wrestling commitments that's giving the company exposure that's the thing that they need they don't have somebody that with that marketability or what I always like to say uh that crossover appeal where you know the, the thing I always said with the E, why certain people thrive as champion, they like their champions to be able to show up on Good Morning America mm-hmm. or various shows with the title where that title's shining and is you know being seen yeah. uh, on TV and whatnot. So if that's a reason, that's dumb and that's thinking well, small minded. <laughs> I mean, I I kind of feel like sometimes that's how Don is. He just kind of you know real life thoughts and things like that come into his commentary. Yeah, I mean, I, I've said it before. I think he's kind of a, the worst thing that could have happened is uh, being dubbed the Golden Booker. I think mm. sometimes that kind of got to his head. I would agree with that. Um, but, yeah, no, we got what we expected with Eddie and Eli not really getting along in the beginning, tagging each other in blindly. Um, the Rascals were still able to get some looks despite being in there with two former world champions. Um, I'm sure they showcased this on the YouTube, but we saw that an interesting combination move that the Rascals did on Eli. Like Eli was holding both of them and then they flipped back over with like a DDT version of a Canadian destroyer. Yeah, I see. I seen that. It yeah, was that a pretty was, cool was, spot. You know, Eli works well with the uh, X division guys. I, the he one works thing... well with everybody, man. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, when he, the thing that I loved when he was a uh, world champion was when they were pitting him. I think especially his match that he had with Petey Williams. Oh yeah, he made Petey Williams look so credible in that match. Where there was parts in that match where I was like, oh snaps, like. Yep. Well, they do the unthinkable, and that comes to show the type of talent that they have, and it's a shame that they're not recognizing. But before I lose my thought, to get to the Rascals, now, they've, I think the past couple weeks, they've uh, racked up wins. I I believe so. Now, Uh, Last week, all of them had a win. Okay, you've pushed this team as, you know, the bright upstart team, and then 
you throw them out there like this. And I get it. You know, Eli and and uh, Eddie are higher on the totem pole. But why not have Eli and Eddie face some of the local talent? Why do you have to use in a, a team that you're trying to build? Like, this is the same type mm-hmm. of booking that doomed the Desi Hit squad. Remember Desi Hit squad? They had it. They were winning a couple matches, had some momentum on their side. They lose the LAX. Poof, that was the end. That's now, it. I, I'm not saying this is going to be the end of the Rascals. I'm sure they'll be fine, but they're just going to be a team. And you'd like to believe anybody on this roster, the goal is to potentially challenge for some title, whatever division that you're in. Right. And ha- having them lose, you know, lose matches like this already, like it does them a disservice. No, you're absolutely right. I uh, couldn't agree more. Uh, I did like the way they finished the match, though. Um Eddie was got the hot tag, and he ended up bringing the I think the kendo stick into the ring. Or no, he he wasn't the legal man. Never mind. Um, Eddie did have the kendo stick. He brings it in the ring. The ref gets distracted by that, so Eli ends up grabbing the kendo stick behind the ref's back. He cracks Dez over the head with it, hits the gravy train, and picks up the victory. Then Eddie is yelling at Eli for well touching Kenny after the match. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that's playing up to Eli's heel tactics. I mean, I know a lot of times a lot of people have wanted him to turn face. And, you know, I, I think, you know, there's a path to it. You know, they, I'm sorry I'm do, doing so much WWE references today, but you think about uh, late uh, 99 Rock where, you know, he, they, they the fans really turned him face. And I guess that's mm-hmm. the path for Eli if they want to go that route. But, yeah, I, I really like this pairing and i think there's so much they can do the question is will they do such (laughs) who knows time will tell but yeah you know you were 100 percent correct you didn't need the rascals to be the team to take the victory to take the loss in this match but they did unfortunately (laughs) yep but they did all right so we uh get a video from tessa about her suspension obviously she blames gail for losing her title she says her suspension is lifted soon and she challenges taya for rematch for february 15th uh, a little later on melissa interviews taya and taya accepts tessa's challenge she says let's make it a knockout championship street fight so there's that well i guess that's the way to blow off the feud yeah um yeah, you know, it's a shame it's not as promoted as the uh, the match. And we'll, obviously, we'll get to it. But because uh, this is going to take place at uh, Uncaged, right? Yeah, I yeah. believe so. Yeah, you know, hopefully, they, you know, promote it as, as, you know, such as a big deal because it's essentially going to be the blow off. Anytime you get a gimmick type match mm-hmm. being a street fight, that usually blows off the feud. So, yeah, we'll yeah. see. It, it should be good. I, I would assume that both women have put on. Uh, at least their other two matches were good. Homecoming was a little skewed because of, well, we all know how it went down. I just feel, though, I wish they kind of would have gotten it out the way. So then if we're going to get the Gail Kim Tessa, they could have really just dive right in. Mm. But, I mean. We, no, I this is going to be a, this is gonna be a long burn thing, I think. Uh, I, I just don't see Tessa that really doesn't need the, the, the rub, though. Yeah. <laughs> I, Oh, I don't know. I, Again, no, let it play. It. I guess got to let it play out. <laughs> well, I mean, you've said it before where it seems like talent like almost expires in the company. Like they do everything they can do and then they move on. And I mean, Tessa got, you know, a quick shot into the knockouts picture. She was champion. And how much is really left for her to do? Yeah, it's become a situation where a big fish in a small pond, yeah. and I and I and I'm not saying that she can't thrive elsewhere because oh, no, no. I'm sure I'm sure she can, but but she kind of you can argue she became bigger than the company in a matter of time, and you, you wonder if them taking the title off of her was kind of like hey 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 settle down here. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, but again, you're, she's working all independent. She's got a lot of focus on her and if you know she's holding that knockouts championship you know she they could be like oh i can see tessa here she's champion so i don't know i'll say this and this might be unpopular for some oh boy <laughs> they if they ever did a thing um, where they started granting releases better hope she's not one of these people that wants that that's all i'm saying oh well she's a hot commodity so anybody would snatch her up 
Yeah, but I mean, just the fact that if they're granting releases and she, you know, asks for hers, I mean, you know, not only that, you know, be bad, but I mean, that'd be very telling. I mean, I don't, you know, obviously she got a, you know, good push, but I don't know. I just feel like this whole, with the whole angle with Gail Kim is just not needed for her. And mm-hmm. I mean, I'd rather them get away, get through with it and then have her go back, you know, uh, challenge her for the knockouts championship. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so we had Rich Swan, and he says that everything Sammy said was right. Uh, when he was 18, he had no one to watch his back. So that's where Sammy came in. Uh, we see a bunch of pictures of them together from years ago. And he says th- over the years, he's seen Sammy see the best in you, but he's also seen him take out the best in you and use it for himself. So just a little more for continuing that feud right there. Uh, and then we have Falaba versus Psycho Clown. So this match took place, I guess, a little preview of the World Cup, as they're calling it. We're going to get Team AAA versus Team Impact, I think, on... I guess that's going to take place on Uncaged? Uh, I think so. I, I didn't yeah. catch when they when they advertised it, but I'm assuming. Yeah. Probably. Uh, we did see at one point uh, Falaba attempt to rip the mask off of Psycho Clown. I think he actually did rip it a little bit. And it was a little uncharacteristic of Falaba. Um, Josh and Don tell us that KM isn't here because he is still recuperating from the attack of Brian Cage weeks ago. What was that, three weeks ago? <laughs> you know, I was watching this and I thought two things. You know, my first thing was like, wow, you know, you think about a few months ago, especially closing out last year, all the momentum KM and Fala had, and then it's just like a balloon. You let the air out, mm-hmm. you know, where you know where they've um, kind of fallen, and you know, seeing Fala compete in a singles match, I said, and you know, we seen the tweet. Or for those of you who haven't, you know, KM tweeted forty five days. Now, I mean, you know, you can be optimistic and think that's when he resigns, or you can think. Potentially, maybe his contract expires and he's going to leave. You know, mm-hmm. we have to wait and see. But I did think, K, uh, sorry, following this match, it seemed like he's playing up a hill a little bit. A lot of his uh, face tendencies, and, and maybe like just me, because I, you know, I was, uh, especially with the mask ripping, I thought Fala was uh, playing up a hill a bit. And, a I bit. Th- and I thought I said to myself, I said, eh, assuming that they do break up the team and if KM were to leave, they they could push Fala as kind of like that monster mid card heel because I the, the one thing I did like despite him losing this match I mean you know he lost by a roll up obviously so it wasn't like he you know just got squashed he, yeah. he did look he did look credible in, in parts of this match so I I like that so that is a, an avenue that they can take should they break up the team you know you have him turn heel and I think it'd be fine now it probably would mess up you know your younger fan base the kids since he's over with the kids and whatnot but yeah you know this is a late night product you know the appeal is to the adults so hey you know what about the kids (laughs) which is funny because you would think when they're promoting you know the tapings take place at normal time so that would bring in kids but like you said if you're gearing the product toward adults it uh, i don't know (laughs) i just got nothing (laughs) uh but yeah follow ball went for a bonsai drop Cycle Clown reverse into a sunset pl- flip bomb, near fall, and then, like you said, Cycle Cl- Clown gets the victory after basically rolling Falaba up. Um, and then, up next, I thought this was a really good segment. Uh, we get a little back and forth between uh, Brian Cage and Johnny Impact. Cage wants to make sure Impact stays healthy tonight for his rematch at Uncaged. Johnny says they even named the event after him, you know, asking if he's happy. Uh, Cage then says, I'm going to beat you just like I did at homecoming. Impact says, just don't screw me over. And Cage says, don't worry, that's your department. So that was a pretty good back and forth. I liked it. And I'm assuming Cage is supposed to be the face in this, correct? Yeah, you know, it's funny because that's how Johnny has really been portrayed as the heel. And we're going to see that in this match because, you know, I mean, he comes out looking like, the weak one. And that's generally the way they book a heel champion. And you know, on the show, they get the crap kicked out of them. And then they only win at pay-per-views due to screwy finishes. And yeah, I guess. <laughs> we'll get into the main event. But I'll <laughs> say this. If Cage is supposed to be in the face in, in all this, 
I don't see one quality thing that he's done that would give the impression that he's the face. I mean, he's probably, I think people are, are look at Johnny as the heel just because the reception, but you look at Cage's actions, there's nothing that screams face. I mean, if you want to, uh, if he's one of the cool heels or whatever like that, I guess so be it, but there's nothing that Cage has done that's given the impression that he's a face in all this, but I mean... Who am I? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it it is a little interesting. But then you add in Cross and Moose, so they're the de facto heels. So I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then we see Team AAA in the locker room, and they are hyping the Team AAA versus Team Impact match. Um, and then we have the main event: Moose and Moss, Moose and Cross versus Cage and Johnny Impact. And uh, what did you think of this here? I liked how it was going, but then it became predictable. And then the ending, if I can get to it. Look, I mean, I like that Moose got the, got the pin. I think that's good just because, you know, for me, I just see Moose, at, just for, for the time being, yeah, he's going to wrestle his fair share of matches. But, man, he's there to accompany Killer Cross, which is, which is just great. But, like you knew the there was going to be some sort of miscommunication, you know, the tag team partners who don't get along, let alone mm-hmm. tag team partners where the challenger is challenge uh, you know wants to a rematch with the champion he feels mm-hmm. he was screwed out of, you know. But here's my thing, you know, for the audience that believe, you know, Johnny Impact, you know, he's terrible. I think just take the belt off him, put it on Cage. Because I've never, I feel booking has felt Johnny more so than it's been Johnny in his cheesy promos. Like they've, Johnny has eaten so many pins, mm-hmm. or it seems since he's been champion to in favor to and protect, protect Cage <laughs> to protect to protect Cage when Cage is the challenger. Now, when we first got it, where it was them teaming up and they lost to Lucha Brother, I would have been okay with that. I get it, but they're trying to protect Cage, so it's obvious. Cage is the investment. Mm. If you feel that way, take the belt off of Johnny, put it on Cage, just get it over with. Because right. you know what, you're fool, you know, you're fooling some of us to believe like, oh well, you know, all these four, I mean, all these three uh, um, challengers have the potential to to uh, uh, become champion. Right. No, it's Cage. You know, and, should it be Cross? Of course, but it's Cage, and it's it's blatantly obvious. And for him to to uh, watch Johnny get pinned. If he's supposed to be the fa- face, we've seen him. He he lets Johnny get pinned this week. Last week he interferes in the title match. You know, you know. It, but he's supposed to be the face. I mean, you would think, you know, and it, maybe you can argue. Well, he wants to be Johnny himself. Well, you know, he tried to do that. It didn't work. You mm-hmm. know. But once again, we see with certain individuals, their you know the rematch cross is justifiable. So it, it's just, man, they I just really feel they failed Johnny. Uh, uh, the booking has failed Johnny. Absolutely. And especially, well, you know, his big title victory was a screw finish. And then he has the screw finish at homecoming. Um, but, yeah, no, the route would have been to go, honestly, is if you're going to use Cage as the baby face, which obviously the direction looks like that's what they're planning or that's their intent, then you have Cross take the title off Johnny, screw him, screwing cage and have cage be the baby face chasing i I, just i don't know i think the worst thing they could have done and i think we spoke about this before because if you think about it i don't know if you agree or not but when johnny started off as champion the reign was fine i I mean i was really on board i thought he was you know putting on some great uh title defenses you think he was going the de facto face champion route where he was going to have open challenges and stuff like that and it creates you know new and interesting matchups but then yeah yeah, like I thought, you know, with Phoenix, and then I thought, you know, maybe that when his first encounter with Cross, I thought they sh- probably should have done a no contest and mm-hmm. try to extend that to homecoming. I thought homecoming would have been a, a proper way. If you're going to have Cross eat his first pin, you know, to Johnny, albeit then so be it. I thought with Cage, if you're going to do Cage, you got to wait enough where Johnny's kind of got a, a, enough title defenses underneath his belt before you do that match just because you know everyone's going to favor cage but they were in such a rush to um elevate cage to that status now you you got people clamoring for cage to be champion Mm -hmm. it's 
um, doomed John, Johnny Impact's title reign because I don't think he's done anything wrong outside of being corny no. <laughs> and you know the booking of the homecoming match mm-hmm. and it just it just seems like a mess because you know the moment they put the title on Cage it's just gonna be all out dom- dominance and then we're yep. gonna be sitting here wondering well who does he face next or should they bring someone from the outside who should they sign and then yeah. you know it's the same thing that we've seen in other divisions. Well, they also didn't do a great job of building heat between Cage and Johnny for that match to be big at homecoming. They waited to, what, the last week or two to do it? I mean, I, I think the cash-in of the option C was not the right way to go. go. And much like you said, just kind of have them do their own thing and let Johnny have his title reign and then eventually have Cage take it off him later down the road. Yeah, but I mean, I think sometimes we see with some of these people that they sign, you know, they really want to capitalize on it. Like, these are the type, like whether it was Cage or Lucha Brothers or even Jordan Grace, I'd say. And, you know, I guess I can't throw her in the mix right now because she seems fine with what they're doing. But these are the types of talents that you want to kind of give a slow burn to because, you know, once you get them to that point, people are going to be, that's what people are going to want. And I just think with Cage, like, had they had they done cage challenging Johnny at this pay-per-view that we're going to get, I think it would have been better because you figure, yeah, Johnny's had this long reign. He's, you know, had the, the story feud with killer cross and now he, he faces his toughest challenge yet cage Mm -hmm. instead, you know, we got what we got and it just, I I just kind of just found myself. I'm just watching. I just said, you know, like I get it like with Johnny, like he, you know, everything seems forced. And I know people are saying, well, turn him hill. Like, we've seen some of these people, and I use Moose, for example. And he, there, there's another guy. He could have feuded with Moose. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought that would have been a nice challenger. You have so many people for him to face until you're ready for him to face his biggest challenge yet. But, you know, everyone says, well, turn him hill, turn him hill. Like, how many people have they turned hill that it seems really benefited from him? And I'll use Moose again. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, you know, he's been great in his role, but how, has he seen closer to the title now than he did when he was faced? Like, if anything, it just seems like he's more of in the background, you know, as, as for the time being. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's I mean, Cross is the one that's been getting the opportunities more so out of the two of them. And, and I mean, I guess, you know, my final point is, you know, him getting the pin, I guess that kind of thrusts him in there. But I mean, if they do, I don't know if they announce anything, but it, it seems like we're going to get a fatal four way. I mean, at some point anyway, yeah, (laughs) he's probably the least uh, he has the least shot of actually winning. So he's just kind of just a throw in. But it's just, man, it's just kind of one of these things. And I always say this, man, you know, when when Impact does great things, you know, we gush and we praise it. And man, this is just phenomenal stuff. But then when they do not so great things, I mean, it seems like you can't be critical. You know, we kind of have this standard with other companies, but I think, and maybe it comes from with impact and, you know, a lot of the bashing and in the past, you know, a lot of it was unfair, but let's face it. Some of the decision-making that they've made, especially, especially recently, it's really warranted and you find yourself and I'll see at times and, you know, a lot of it's troll talk, so you can't get too much into it, but it's like, damn, like, I can't disagree with that. Like, yeah, they got, they got a point, you know, and it, it's unfortunate, man, because you know what? The talents, they go out there, they, you know, they work hard, you know, they, well, they, do, they do what the booking gives them to do. And so it's not their fault. It's no. if anything. It's the creative. Yeah, no, I, I would definitely say that the talent is definitely not at fault for any of this. And it, I don't know, like I said, I just popped on a little bit during the show, but it, the highest I saw was like 6,700 viewers. And when the main event time came, it was like down to 5,200. I mean, I don't know. It's just tough to see such a drop like that with people still continually praising the company, saying everything is great and things like that. But well, it's this is this. It seems like in look, I'm not trying to call, I'm not calling out anyone, obviously, but it seems like it's the same bunch. Like I, I always say it like this. The people, some of the people who follow Impact, respond to all the Impact things, are going to buy all the pay-per-views, going to get the GWN, going to watch on Twitch. So it's that same that same base. 
So it's it's really not growing. It's just that same. So it just seems like and maybe Impact's okay with appealing to that group. If they mm-hmm. they are, then so be it. But there's not really no no growth. And I mean, I thought with the Twitch to hear those numbers. I mean, is even it seems like maybe some of those fans like you got to think of that time slot is a hard slot. People yeah, do have things to do and 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 whatnot. So. It, it just, I, I don't know. And like you said, I think you hit the nail on the head. We all thought 2019 was going to be a year where they take off, especially with that pay-per-view homecoming. And it just feels like another rebuild. Yeah. Uh, that's that's for sure. And uh, I guess we're just going to have to see how it continues. Um, but, I mean, overall, the show, it, it was decent. Not too much going on outside of the matches made for Uncaged. Um but I mean, do you see this being a show that would really draw any new viewers in? Well, I think I'll, I'll, I'll put it like this, and I, I can just only say for myself: if I was reading this report, you know, or where where it showed everything that took place, I if I was a casual, there might be a couple things I want to see. I mean, maybe see the Rascals match with the Eddie and Eli, and probably the main event. Those would probably be the two things that I would be like, oh, okay. I was like, let me let me see how this plays out. There's nothing else that really was like, oh, okay, I got to see this because mm-hmm. you know if you've seen the Lucha Brothers and you know they compete in MLW and you know wherever else they compete, I feel like you've seen their matches, so it's it's going to be nothing different. Yeah. So I did just that's just but that's just my my take on it. You know, we yeah. all watch Impact differently, so. Yeah, and I mean week after week. Impact is always advertising the matches, and like I said, I don't know if doing so is really drawing any people in. Yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully, man, and I mean as much as because I feel, um, if anything, I've been super critical today. You know, hopefully they can turn the corner. I do think the the bright spot is them having that pay per view, but you know, it, it was such a blow to everybody. We were, you know, a lot of us were in the mindset that, you know, the talent was even talking about a new TV deal and everything like that. And then all of a sudden hit with the pursuit and finding out that almost everybody doesn't have it. And then thankfully, you know, Twitch got involved. So we were able to watch it that way. But then you see the numbers on Twitch and it's like, well, things were reported. They were doing 150,000 a couple months ago, and I only see 5,000 people viewing on Twitch. How do these? How does this add up? I uh, I'll say my final point, man, is I think just for me, what really had me sour is just because I thought even though in 2018, you know, when they started telling off post slam anniversary, and news got out that they weren't renewing with Pop. I was of the mindset, I'm sure, like many, that, okay, they're in negotiations with another TV mm-hmm. deal. You know, and look, I understand it's hard, you know, to try to market this product. I mean, not market, but try to sell this product that, you know, obviously the viewership isn't where some networks would want it. But I just had the the utmost confidence in them that they were going to secure some just because we got the news when we got the news. And then we seen the time slot change. And then I'm thinking, okay, well, they're still in negotiations. And then to get what we got and then not only to get what we got, but to get it at 10 o'clock on a, on a channel that Imp- uh, Impact Anthem has a stake in and a channel that less people have than pop. I just, the way that I took it, and look, and I might be wrong for saying this, I felt like this was probably the plan all along. I felt like maybe they did their due diligence talking with networks, but that was never the goal. That the goal was, yeah, to you know put them on some TV channel, but to move to... Or more of a digital format because they felt like, you know, digital is where a lot of things going so they can get a lot of people to watch there, which, you know, is great. But then, you know, you put it at the time that you put it at and then you don't have the video on demand. So if I'm like, like I said, for me, I'm probably just from now on until further notice or I find some other uh, method. I'm just going to watch on YouTube. I All mean, right. right now- well, you're talking about that. Now, I, I understand you followed the product for years and years, so you've been invested. But how is this – how can a casual fan, you know, go from watching it on TV to all of a sudden catching highlights and keeping them interested and involved? Well, it for me, it's just a repeat of the Destination America days because before when I was still living at home, we didn't, I didn't get that channel. So I had to, you know, rely on YouTube and – 
that's how I was able to keep up with the product. And then, you know, that was what back in 2015. And eventually I got a, um, when I got out on my own and I got cable, I was able to get the channel. Yeah. But, but you're right. And that's why a lot of the fans, because I always look back, I always say for me, my favorite year would, back when they were TNA, you know, I like the early years, but I loved 2009 so much. And, uh, um, you know, you look at you fast forward 10 years later, it's, you know, the company's just kind of a, you know, hanging on a thread. And I don't think it's so much, oh, they're going to go out of business, but, Mm-mm. you know, they're, they're they so got their many, base and that's what they're going to target. Yeah, there's so many different options. Now, and I think that's the thing people have to take into account where it's not so much so so much yeah they're gonna die but people can watch something else and you know we've we've stressed this enough the exclusivity aspect mm-hmm. of it all like i think the thing that drew me drew me to teenage during that time was they had talents that i couldn't see elsewhere outside of you want to watch older matches in the uh, former promotions but they had talents that i could only see in tna or you know in only in impact but mm-hmm. when you have somebody who works impact who will work work mlw or who will work you know another promotion if i can't catch them there oh, i can just go tune in and watch you watch you know this other promotion that they're promote uh on so but you know my, my thing was is you know having to rely on youtube and youtube highlights and you know while i miss some of the stuff i feel like i kind of get a good idea of how the show show was and and I think a lot of people. I can see a lot of people following suit. You might not be able to. You you might not be able to catch catch a, it on Twitch at the time it airs, and or you know you might catch the middle of it. And you know, ain't nobody waiting no ten days to catch it on the GWN. And then mm. <laughs> finally, like Twitter, if you follow, you know, follow Impact on Twitter, they like everything's sport, posted there. <laughs> yeah, you know, they they post a lot of stuff, and and I mean. I, I just don't know, man. It's just like you love this company, man, because they bring, you know, the thing that made me fall for it is they brought a brand of wrestling that nobody else was producing. Mm-hmm. And to see it become what it's become, man, it's just it's so sad. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's hard to have them distinguish themselves from the other promotions. But, yeah, I, I guess we were a little down today, but. Hopefully it continues upward. I don't know if you have any more to add, but we are kind of rambling on at this point. No, I'm good, man. <laughs> good. All right. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed the show. Thank you once again, Ro, for joining me. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Did you like that video? If so, click here to check out more great content. Thank you for supporting the Clock Cleaners podcast.